Hi Fidelity Fortune Hunters, it's Tom Wilmot. Welcome to our series of videos on how to navigate through the ins and outs of Fidelity's Active Trader Pro. I think if I've called it Advanced Trader Pro one time, it's been 50 times. Sorry about that. Active Trader Pro ATP. In this video, we're going to continue uh, with our investigation of the platform by uh, talking about some workarounds to the uh, Fibonacci extension tool, that drawing tool we talked about in our last video in some depth. And uh, second of all, we would like to uh, build for you a new and different template. And hopefully uh, that template will be of interest to some of our day trading uh, compatriots. I hope so. If those two things are of interest, please stick around and we'll get started right after this. Okay, friends, in our last video, we were talking about the Fibonacci retracement tool, and I've uh, taken the liberty of adding that to our chart on Beyond Meat, which is right here. If you missed that previous video, uh, it is in our playlist on our channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash vineyard fx and there's a, a, a link to that in the description below this video but in any event uh it, that's if you're new to the material you can find all of our uh, videos about this particular platform down there but in any event if we came up here to the drawing tools not the indicators but the drawing tools area we would find it right here this is the Fibonacci time sequence, which you can play with on your own uh, time. But we're going to talk here. When we click down at left click, we would come to this area. We would come from here down to here to measure the thrust, the length of the thrust in that in that original downward move. Okay, and this is an this is an art, not a science, in terms of picking your points. But in any event, then we change the color. We uh, snap to price. We got rid of one of the lines here in order to give us just three. And then we can add a value. And when we add that value, what we'd like to do is maybe put in the 127 or the 1618 extension. We're going to add that value, click on it. You have to click here before you can apply. And now what we'd like to do is go up here to this area and see if it came up. And sure enough, that's what happens. And that's the limitation of this tool because it only gives you a backwards view of things. If the retracement continued to 127, then you'd see it up here above where you began the downward thrust. Now, if you're doing butterflies or something and you're like likely to say, maybe this is going to take off and go up here again, those are some targets, the 1618 or the 127, you could surely use for that. But it's only really helpful if the stock continues to retrace and, and you know, reverse the trend. If you're looking to see what happens down in this area with an extension, you're out of luck. Now, here's a workaround that you can use. Let's get out our trusty calculator. Sorry to uh, make you crazy with math. Uh, and I'll clear this to show you how I got this. I went from 221 minus 163. And I found those points by using that pin to the bottom. You have to kind of look to make sure. you. It doesn't have to be completely exact, but it's better if you are. And so therefore, what we ended up with was 58. Now, Let's take a look and say if we multiply 58 times 27%, oops, wrong, wrong thing, sorry, 58 times 0.27, we're going to end up with about 15 or 16 bucks. Okay, so 15 uh, is the area that we'd like to have. And if we go back and, sorry, bring up our calculator again, 163 minus 16. Gets us to 147, maybe 147 and a half. We use our drawing tools again, give ourselves a horizontal line. And what we can do here is find the little dot, left click on it. Come on, baby. It brings up this. Let's change our color so that we have a nice bright color, line thickness. We give ourselves a little more room. And let's say, uh, I think we said 147, 148, 147. And then we apply, and sure enough, 
we're right smack dab on the 127 extension. Now, obviously, the 1618 would be a little further down. You'd have to uh, simply multiply that uh, 58 by, by uh, 0.618. And then you'd be ready to add your line in this area. Now, I know I'm adding it after it happened, but if you were here at the 38 and you wanted to see what the potential extension was to the downside, certainly you could do that ahead of time. And now you could put in the 1618 and see if you can figure out where that target might be to the downside should beyond uh, fail further. So that's the uh, the end of our workaround on the Fibonacci retracement tool. Hope that helps. And if you'll hang on just a second, we'll be back with the second phase of this video. Okay, uh, the second half of our video today has to do with templates and how you build them. It's, uh, it's no uh, problem, in my opinion, if you want to test different uh, looks on the screen, different settings and so forth. It gives you a different perspective as to how the market's developing. And in this one, I'd like to tell you a little bit about something called uh, uh, Long Gimma. Uh, the G in Gimma, G-M-M-A, stands for... Uh, Daryl Guppy's last name. He was a famous technical analyst from Australia who created uh, and, and commented on a lot of the multiple moving average concepts I've followed for a long, long time. Uh, we typically use 12, 16, 20, and 24 EMA, but to be honest with you, uh, we can make that longer as well and uh, see how that would apply to some of our charts. And I think you'll find that especially on the shorter time frames, it's uh, very helpful. If you're a day trader, it's something you might want to incorporate into your work as a different view of things. Now, what we have on the board right now is Apple, obviously. And uh, I have uh, a, an indicator, a template, sorry, that I would find up here in our floppy disk icon, on, icon called nada, which means nothing, just uh, simple candlesticks on the chart. Now, as you know, we can go down here to this particular indicator and bring up our history, and we can either make it a little smaller or a little bigger. Let's make it a little uh, a little wider uh, in, in view of, of the last uh, several days. Now, right now, we have a 60-minute chart on the on the board but as you also know sometimes we like to uh, try to have something that's evened out with the session times now it's six and a half hours so that's 390 minutes and one of the things i've done is to use either a 195 minute chart which would be two uh, candles per session or maybe 78 or 39 those are some views that we will be able to use as we move forward now in order to create a template first of all we have to add some indicators and if we were to go up here to indicators, we could come over to exponential moving averages. Whoops. I, and, and in fact, now what we have is an EMA 20, which has been planted. If you want to change that value, we simply come here, left click on the down arrow, move our mouse over and modify. And what we want to do now is, uh, and you can experiment with your own values, of course, but let's uh, start out with a 30 EMA. And that moves it a little higher. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole business of adding 53 different EMAs to this. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how I have already done that before. And so what we'll do is come back up to the disk. And uh, in this particular area, I added a new template called New Gimma. Let's click on that and see what we get. And in fact, that's what comes up. Now, notice we have the multiple moving averages, and we've gone from a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, all the way up to 60. And you can see that as these twists, as we've watched the 12 and 24 EMA in, in past history with our other charts, we wait for a push higher after the twist, and then we wait and we see if we get a little pullback. And sure enough, there it is here. This is a period of consolidation where there's not much going on for sure. And this is the area over here where we turned into this downturn. We came over, we twisted, we pulled back into the bands, and then we fell significantly. We tried to come up, we tried to break forward on this area today, and then we've ended up headed towards the close with another downward move. Now notice this is a three minute chart. 
That's why I mentioned in the promo here, or in the in the prologue, that perhaps this would be fun for you to watch if you're a day trader. We can move back in time and see what kind of uh, action we saw in previous times. Here was our up move from last week. This was uh, on the twenty uh, on the nineteenth of February, uh, twenty twenty one, and then we came down and hit this soft patch over here. We were in a downward move. We had a little bit of an upturn, but we couldn't sustain it. And down we went. This was in the uh, 22 time frame, which was, uh, I believe, Monday of this week. And then Tuesday, we had the route down a uh, big gap downwards. But notice, you wouldn't be long now because you're in a situation where, uh, even on this three-minute chart, you're in a situation where you have downward-facing arrows. Now, let's try something here and see what we can do about this. We know we already have this saved up in this area here. It has new gimma, and that's why we pulled it up. But let's change a couple things here. Number one, uh, this could very well be 39 minutes instead of three. Let's apply that to the chart and see how things change. Okay. Notice again, we have the twist. We have the failed pullbacks into the bands. And then we have the downward thrust was the gap down this morning. And as we mentioned before, 39 minutes means 10 candles per day. So that's an interesting kind of a situation. This was yesterday's move. And then further down today, we can't get through this area. So depending upon the time frame you pick, you want to be very careful uh, to avoid going against the trend. Now notice also up here we have tabs these are the tabs today in one year. They're irrelevant to us right now. They're taking up a lot of real estate. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of those settings. And we come over here and just click on Show Tabs. Let's get out of that area and apply. And you can see that's a much nicer view of things. Now, if you like this particular view, maybe you want to make it a little tighter and open it up a little bit more so you can see clearly. And then what you can do is you can get rid of this. And then you can save it again. So we come up here to settings and we say save chart. And now we don't want to change the name of it. We just want to save the chart again, save, and we're going to get a, a, an error message or, or a warning. View already exists, but we don't care. We're going to try to get get that uh, new uh, say, uh, setting saved. And so now, instead of three, everything will be 39 minutes. You could save the same template in different time frames and simply note that in your name and your naming conventions. It's all a very handy way to be able to uh, keep track of things. But once again, I wanted to show you this. And let's take a look at how this, uh, just to, before we wrap up, let's take a look at how this particular template can help us with some other issues. Uh, let's see, uh, we've had a big move in the oils recently, this week and last, uh, ExxonMobil. Let's see how they're doing. And at the 39-minute level, you can see big move. Here was a earnings view. Here was a twist. The move up into the bands, a big move higher, pull back, pull back down here. Note the compression of the bands. It's a great place to be able to say we're going to be slingshotting higher. Same thing here, consolidation and a range and then a breakout to the north. And all we've done with the oil today is come back uh, right to the top of the bands. So that's one you can keep your eye peeled for. Uh, this is one I found in the scanner, XEC. Uh, this was one uh, Simrex Energy that's had a heck of a move in the, in the technology, uh, I'm sorry, in the oil energy area. And uh, you can see also we had this nice move higher after the twist. We had a pullback into the bands, a move higher. And the nice part about this is not that you may not be, you, you could very very well be wrong once in a while, but you know exactly where your stop should be, right? Beneath here, so as to avoid uh, having a large stop loss versus the potential for a reasonably good reward. Now, notice here we never had a reversal below, I mean, above this. Uh, we just had a drop back. We had this failed move higher. Notice it couldn't take out the previous high. That's a warning sign. So if we were in this area and it pulls back to here, still no harm done. If it takes out this low, you don't want to be in it again. Down in this area, now we come back up and we head back higher once we take out this particular high here. Let's see what else we have to poke at.
I know I wanted to show you the cues. <clears throat> the cues are coming up next. And you can see here, this is a great way if you're uh, watching options and day trading and so forth and thinking about the cues. Here was a nice move to the north. And then we had this breakdown. Here was our rollover. Down we go, and we never even had a chance to get a pullback into the bands until just today when we had this move higher that failed, and off we went into the close today with the cues. So I hope this new view of things is helpful to you. Baidu would be one last one we could check. That's been on a tear lately for sure. Big move higher, and we can even change this now even without changing our chart. Let's go back to a 195 and see how ba Baidu's been just uh, tearing the world apart here the last few days. And we'll come back here to our histogram, history viewer, and we'll open this up a little bit. Notice here was another one, 195 minute pull back into the bands, consolidation, and then zoom higher pull back after earnings and then a move higher and now we're just back down to this level here so hope that new uh, template is helpful uh, to your viewing pleasure and uh, as i said you can make modifications if you want to make it a little faster you could come to the 60 and change that into a 25 let's see what happens there we could take the top one and change it and move it down so this would speed things up a little bit and so forth so you can see exactly how your template's going to shift and change over time and you can make modifications and if you don't bother to change them by saving it up here nothing harm no harm done and you're on to your next uh, on to your next day of trading and your next set of uh, of stock symbols okay guys if this material is helpful to you, please subscribe, uh, give us a like, uh, don't be stingy, leave us a comment or a question if we can help you, and sh be sure to hit the alarm bell on the subscribe button if you'd like alerts about new material. And please, don't forget, go to uh, our YouTube video playlists to find out if there are other videos that would be helpful to your trading. Okay, good luck, and see you next time.